Sandy, Utah. It's a beautiful sunny winter day. And um, this is my my weekly check-in and share with you what I have going on. So um, I have a few things to share with you. Um, let me go ahead and get started. I'm just going to change my settings here so that I can see any comments as you join me. If you have any questions, go ahead and type them in the chat so that I can see them. Um, first of all, um, I am working, trying every day uh, to spend time, creative time, working on this. Uh, I've got lots of quilts that I'm working on. The one that I want to get finished this week, um, I'll share with you. It's going to be night noise or critters at night. So uh, let me let me show you what I'm working on. Um, so this week I got, you've seen the frog. Um, here are some Luna moths. If you follow me on Instagram, which is collage.quilter, you might have seen these on the parchment paper. Hi, guys. Great to see you as you're hopping on. Um, so here's the here's the Luna moth. I've done two of these blocks. I couldn't be more happy with the way these turned out. I This background, obviously, it's very busy, but um, Amelia and I felt like moths tend to kind of hide, and I just, this looks really good with the palette that I'm working with. So we've got these blocks that are finished. I'll be um, putting things together really soon. Uh, this block obviously has some little fireflies going on and my intention with these when I quilt is to create a little halo of light around each uh, firefly. Um, and then the other block that I got finished is the Cricut. Again, with the thread, when I go to quilt him, he will have his antennas. And so that's what I've gotten done so far. I also have a beetle that I think I'm going to put in this quilt, the night noise quilt, because we know that there are bugs out in the forest at night. Um, so these, along with the frog, um, I will be working on an owl and some bats this week. And then I think, I think that's everything that I had planned for this quilt. So I'm really hoping to have this quilt finished, um, at least pieced together, all the collage uh, blocks finished and then pieced together. Maybe if I'm lucky, I can get it quilted, but by this time next week, when you tune in, hopefully I'll have that all pulled together. I'm really excited about the way that's coming. Um, I also just want to share with you a few other things that I had going on this weekend. I did, or this week, I did a trunk show for some new friends up in Heber, Utah, and, um, that was really, really fun. Um, I haven't been able to do very many live events because COVID is going on. So that was my first live event in a long time. And it was really fun to be with some people. But thank goodness we've got technology, right? Um, another thing that I had going on this weekend or this week is I did a private webinar for a group. And many of you have probably seen this. I posted this in the Collage Quilter Academy Facebook group. Um, <clears throat> so this group hired me to do a private two hour webinar and we were working on the Raven. I'm so happy with the way this is turning out. Uh, one thing that I just want to point out, even though it's a raven, there's not one single piece of black fabric in this. Um, it's just dark and you can see all of the beautiful different fabrics. Um, so I am super, I, I'll, I'll continue to work on this. I want to get this done. It shouldn't take me that much longer, but this will be a beautiful bird and Maybe I'll put this in the night noises too. I don't know, <laughs> but uh, I'm going to figure out something with this. So those are the things that I've been working on. Um, this year, I also, just this week, I also announced that every month I'm going to be offering a paid webinar. It will be roughly an hour to an hour and a half, maybe as long as two hours, um, but it will be focusing on a small project. So for example, like we did with this one, um, 
the first one so you can find access where to register for those webinars they're just 35 bucks to join me for an hour or so um and i will demonstrate what you know the process that i go through uh starting with fabric selection and then um going through the actual construction of it and it's a nice format so that i can see you and you can show me your work and we can have a more intimate um, class dialogue. And so those are available on my website under um, learn. So I have an education section. And if you go there, you can see all the things that I've made available to help you learn the craft that I'm doing. And the first webinar that we're going to be doing is uh based on this quilt let's see so i think what we're going to start with is this teapot i thought this would be a really good one for midwinter when most of us are getting frozen solid um so we'll be doing this teapot um you can also see it in a different colorway in this quilt ah right here so i'll be walking through how i select fabric um for this and and how to approach getting started with this this is taken from my collage quilter academy or excuse me collage quilter essentials essentials for success with collage quilts this pattern comes from that book so anyway that's that and i am grateful to have this quilt sitting on my lap because it is cold today <laughs> um all right, so uh, let me get to your questions. So that's kind of what I've been what I've been doing, working on the projects that I want to get done. The night noises, obviously, I've got the sea creatures going on as well. Um, no more progress on that this week. Hopefully, I'll get to that ASAP. But um, oh, one more thing, we have new blue fabric bundles in stock on the website so now in stock is blue pink green and i've just opened up another shipment of purple and yellow so we'll have those available sometime this week as well so um anyway that's what's going on with me i want to hear what's going on with you all and um say hello to you so let me look at your comments and questions and see who's on with us uh, Joe Williams, great to see you from North Wales and Amy from Oakdale, California. It's always, it's so fun for me to, um, to see you all that I feel like I'm starting to get to know, like Barbara hops on all the time and says, hello. I just, it really, I feel like you're my friends. And so I'm really grateful for you for being here. This is, it's the highlight of my life <laughs> to, interact with you. I, I enjoy it a lot. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, okay. I'm going to get to questions real quick. So someone just asked, uh, will we see kits soon for night noises? Yes. We've started kitting each block, but I don't want to release them until I have the whole quilt finished. So uh, there will be um, a limited number of kits available for the Night Noises quilt. Um, the kit will include just the background fabric. So for example, um, this, this is the background fabric that you'll need for the frog. So we've got the background of the frog, the border, and then um, you can, you'll also use some of this fabric for fussy cutting in the block and then a smaller piece for fussy cutting for that um, for the frog block. So we have those ready. Not very many, of course, um, but I am working on getting everything ready um, for those kits. The collage parts themselves will not be included. You will um, you can use your own stash for each of the collage parts or they um, that's why we have the fabric bundles available. So, for example, if you purchase the green fabric bundle, you'll be able to make the frog and then um, 
the background fabric will be available as part of the kit. So that's what's going on with that. Hope that answers your question. Oh, Robin just said, um, Robin Jones from Minneapolis said, I bet you're not as cold as here. It's negative <laughs> one. No, we're not that cold yet. In fact, um, it's cold today. It's probably in the 20s right now, maybe going up to the 30s. But it was funny. So the group that I taught the Raven to was up in the Yukon of Canada. They're in a little town called Haynes Junction um, in Canada. And they told me that it was, oh, let's see. She told me Celsius. And I don't know what the translation is, but it seemed like it was probably 30 degrees below zero. They were freezing. And it was funny, too, because in the, you know, the class it was probably 11 30 when she said oh look the sun is just coming up <laughs> so anyway oh somebody asked what is the quilt behind your chair i wanted to pull this out because i wanted to answer a question that somebody had about washing quilts so um i a while ago put this quilt this is the woodlands quilt i washed and dried this quilt on a regular setting, not delicate, which is what I would normally recommend, but I did it as a test to see how things turn out after washing. And um, so in answer to the question about, can I wash a collage quilt? The answer is yes. I've always said the number one most important factor is dense quilting. And um, so this is a really great example of how it turned out. I, it, it softened it up quite a bit because when I use steam -a -seam, um, and I do recommend using steam -a -seam, especially if you're gonna be washing a quilt because the adhesive covers each piece of fabric very uniformly from edge to edge. And I find that it produces the, um, a minimum amount of fraying versus using glue. Glue tends to fray more than using steam -a seam So um, anyway, I that's why this quilt is here. I just wanted to share that with you because somebody had asked a question earlier in the week about washing a quilt. Um, and I wanna show you the, the close-up. When I talk about quilting, um, dense quilting, this is what I mean when I say dense quilting. No more than a, a half inch between stitch lines. And most often when I quilt something, it's um, tighter than that. So you can see on that, on these little bluebells, how tight that stitching is. And I'm not stitching around each piece, but I am doing a dense stitching quilting so that everything is tacked down. Um, so that's that. Normally I, and oh, this fabric makes it a little bit difficult to see the the density of the quilting, maybe it's better to just go ahead and show it in the on the front. But the other thing that I do when I quilt is I do just kind of a doodle stitching to emphasize the shape or the object that I'm working on. So for, and I always match the thread to um, whatever it is that I'm working on. So with the, with the squirrel, you can kind of see I, just kind of followed the contours of his little body. I did change the thread to when when um, I got to these darker areas to match him. Um, here's just a little teeny, teeny, teeny bit, minimal bit of fraying uh, from putting it through the wash, but I think it doesn't bother me at all. In fact, it just, as I said, it just kind of softens it up. And because we're dealing with textiles, I think it's okay to, um, to have that textile feel. So that's an answer to a question. Um, can we wash collage quilts? Yes, I would always recommend washing them on delicate and um, laying them flat or hanging them to dry. But I didn't do that with this one because I wanted to kind of challenge it and see what would happen. Of course, the more we wash it, the more wear and tear it's going to get. Um, let's see, another question that I had um, how, oh, someone asked a really great question. How do I store fabric that has steam -a seam on it? Um, so there are a couple ways that I store my fabric. Any, any time that I have fabric that has steam -a seam on it and my pieces of my pieces, when I have steam -a seam on them are about this size, roughly, they're not much bigger than this. And so I have just 
a bunch of these bins like this from the container store. And you can see that's kind of messy, but for now it works. Um, all of these pieces have steam a seam and it allows them to just kind of lay flat in here. I also have fabric pieces that don't have steam a seam, but that's about as large as a piece of fabric that I'll keep in this uh, container. Anything larger than that, um, especially my fat eighths from what, you know, um, after I've cut a slice that I'm going to work with, I'll fold them up and put them in a little bit larger bins that are, um, let me see, I don't have one out, but you can kind of see these other bins back here. So this is my gray bin. Um, again, it's not super tidy, but it does allow the fabric to lay flat. Um, I don't want to have to store a lot of fabric that has steam a seam on it. Um, and I don't want to have to fold my fabric up if it has steam a seam on it. There was another way that somebody said they do, they store their fabric. And I thought this was ingenious. Um, she bought um, file folders, a file folder hanger. And for each color, she's got a folder. So if you don't have a whole lot of fabric, that is a really good way to get started. And it's very inexpensive to do it that way, to just keep them in a hanging file folder. Um, okay, so I think that answers the questions that I had from earlier. Now let me take a look here and make sure I've answered any other questions that I see coming up. Uh, let's see. Hello, Anna from Spain. I love seeing our international uh, members. That's really fun. Um, Pam, thank you for joining us from Michigan. She said it's cold, but these mo Monday gatherings always warm my heart. Me too. Uh, let's see. Could you discuss your process for background fabric? They are fabulous. Thank you. So um, I will talk about selecting background fabric real quick. Um, I always, when I am approaching a quilt, like the Night Noises quilt, um, well, that one, that one was a little bit, a little bit wonky because I had done the frog and I didn't know, um, I didn't know what I was going to do with it. But generally speaking, when I when I am thinking about a quilt, the thing that I'm going to do is just pull out fabric that I love. I'm going to start collecting a really good, yummy palette of fabric, and um, I I normally pull together more than what I think I'm going to need and then I can eliminate things. So that's what I did. I started pulling together fabric for the night noises. I was auditioning. I, I knew that I had to, so I had applied the frog. Let me get the frog, he's right here. Um, oh, it's getting messy in here. It's time to clean up the studio. <laughs> um, I, um, I, I had kind of limited myself because I had already adhered the frog to this purple fabric. And the reason I chose the purple, I simply was auditioning the frog on different colors. I wanted it to be high contrast. I very rarely use um, black or white. I'm really moving away from, uh, I, I'm, I just, I love color. so. I'm experimenting. I'm in a phase where I'm just playing with a lot of color. And in this quilt, there actually won't be any, there won't be very much white and there won't be very much black. It's going to be all color. Um, with the Cricut, so I had created this block and I had the Cricut on this block and I was building it up, you know, adding the additional collage elements. And the Cricut was a little bit lost on here. Um, it, it just wasn't clicking for me. And so we started, Amelia and I started putting the Cricut, let me pull him out again. We started pulling out fabric that we loved that I knew I needed it to be high contrast enough so that the cricket would stand out. He just wasn't standing out on this lighter background. Um, the other thing that I really liked about this background is the geometric 
uh, grid um, on this that kind of mimicked the angle of his legs. And once we started playing, once we laid him down on this, number one, we could see that he really stood out. It, it um, highlighted the, the cricket. And then we just started laying, you know, fussy cut pieces, fussy cut elements from the fabric. So um, I always say start with fabric you love. Uh, one of the biggest mistakes I made with one of my quilts was thinking that I had to do something that was in a different color palette. Um, and so I, for my first aviary quilt, selected a palette that I didn't really love. It was dusty colors and um, I have always disliked that quilt for that reason. It just never worked for me. It didn't speak to me. So um, I've become really in tune with the colors and the palettes and the fabric that I love. And I tend to love, well, it's funny. Somebody asked me on Instagram a while ago, is your favorite color green? Because you use that a lot. And yes, green is my absolute favorite color, partly because it looks so good with every other color. I think that's why I like it. And it comes in such a spectrum of warm to cool. And it's really fun to mix green with other colors. So this one just happened to start out with green and purple. And then I bought um, this Anna Maria Horner fabric just because I loved it. I didn't know how, if I was going to be able to use it, but I took a risk and I bought a bunch of bolts of fabric and thought, you know what? I love it. I'm going to try a new way of making a collage quilt. And I'm going to start with fabric that I love and the colors that inspire me. And I've learned a really good lesson that that was um, that was a really, it's been a really fun way to put together this, this quilt. So um, let's see here. I've got a few more questions coming in. Um, hope that answers your question about backgrounds. Um, so Amy just asked, when will the patterns be available for night noises and sea creatures? So I am hoping that I will have the quilt for I, I'm hoping to have night noises done um get the pattern done by next week the quilt will be done this week I hope um so I, I'm hope I'm aiming for January I'm aiming to do at least at least one quilt per month so January's quilt will be night noises February's quilt which is actually um sea creatures which is further along so sea creatures will be probably the first part of February. Um, okay, so um, Anna Fernandez just asked, will you be offering the horse as a download? Unfortunately, no. That is, there are some patterns that lend themselves to downloads, and there are some patterns that are just best as uh, foundation panels with the preprint with the design preprinted and the horse is one of those. Um, I do have additional, um, patterns that are in that I'm, that are in the works for foundation panels. So those will be coming soon. Um, but the horse will not be a download. Uh, let's see. Carol just asked, I would like to see how you store your fabric after you've put it, put the steam a seam on it. So I, I think I've answered that question. If it has steam a seam, I hold I I put it in these bins. These bins um, are the smallest bins that have my scraps, and they go into a wall unit that I bought at IKEA. I need to take you on a tour of my studio next week. Let's do that. We will. I will do this on my phone, and I can walk around. Well. Actually, I want to wait until I get my new cabinet, my new sewing cabinet. So we'll do that. We'll do a walkthrough of my studio so I can show you where we do everything and um, how I've got it set up. Okay, so let's keep going and see if there are any other questions that I can answer. Oh, dear. Marianne Lincoln just said from Keswick, Virginia, last week without power for five days. You poor thing. Felt like you were on a camping trip that went on and on. I hope you had lots of comfortable quilts to snuggle up in. Sorry to hear that. Okay, let's see. Um, a few of you are still working on the Christmas, uh, 12 Days of Christmas quilt. 
those videos will be up um, at least for the foreseeable future. So you have access to see those. Um, now keep in mind that there is not a video for each block. I believe there were three, three or four videos. You can see all of them either on YouTube or in the Collage Quilter Academy Facebook group. So keep at it, Valerie, and then post your progress in the Collage Quilter Academy Facebook group. Okie dokie. Let's see. Oh, Angela, I'm sorry that you're homesick, but I'm glad that you can join me. Um, I expect a lot of us are having sickness around us. Um, I'm pretty sure Caroline, my daughter, my middle daughter had COVID. Amelia had COVID last week. She's feeling better. Both of them have been vaccinated, but they still had it. Um, I was lucky enough to get my booster like a week before they both came down with it and I haven't picked it up. So hopefully that booster actually did something good. Okay. Um, somebody just asked, as you finish the blocks, would you share the names of the background fabric? Yes, absolutely. I will provide, um, I will provide kits. The kits will sell out quick. I'm sure because I just don't, I just have not invested enough in enough fabric. So I will share the background fabric names with you. Um, let's see. Oh dear. Adelaide, Australia, where it will be 40 degrees Celsius today. So they're in the Southern hemisphere. They're enjoying a lovely summer hot day. It sounds like, um, Barbara just asked a great question. Would you do a black gray bundle? Yes. I am actually working on that. I am working on a bundle that will be black gray cream. And I think I might pull in some browns in that too. Um, I don't know if we'll do another full brown. I just don't use brown very much, but I will, I am collecting fabric for that black, gray, brown, cream, white bundle. Okay. Um, somebody just asked, is the new blue bundle different than the one I already purchased? Yes. Um, all the bundles when we sell out of the current inventory, we order all new fabric. On occasion, there is one or two pieces that will be the same because I love them. Um, but for the most part, when you order a bundle, a blue bundle, um, let's say you ordered that last year and you are interested in the new fabric bundle, yes, the fabric selection is generally new. Um, remember there are 18 pieces of fabric in each fabric bundle and they range from light to dark and warm to cool. I have personally spent a lot of time curating each uh, piece that goes in those fabric bundles. Um, okay, let's see. Um, so Robin just asked a really great question. Robin asked, how long does SAS or Steema Seam stay on fabric when it's stored and not being used? Um, Steema Seam, while I don't know the exact, uh, the exact number of months that it lasts, I have noticed that Steema Seam does seem to have a, sh a shelf life. However, um, when I have a piece of fabric, let's pretend I've got a piece of fabric that has Steema Seam on it and it maybe is pulling away from my fabric. If I reheat it with a dry iron, it does seem to behave again. So I have not had any problem with Steema Seam um, that I've had to throw out. Uh, once it's been on fabric, if I, if I reheat it, it seems to be okay. Um, but I do think Steema Seam has a shelf life. So um, how long that shelf life is, I don't know. But that's part of the reason that I, when I'm preparing fabric, I only do a small amount. I only prepare maybe that much of fabric at a time. Um, let's see here. Angela McPherson said, I started to store my, fab store my scraps by color after Christmas and I've already made three small art quilts. That is awesome. We'd love to see it. I hope you'll post it in the Collage Quilter group. I used a child's toy shelf and it has removable buckets. I do store my scraps with Steema Seam in a different container. Good girl. Okay, thank you for that comment. Um, somebody just asked, Emily, do you use a special pencil? I have problems with the pencil transferring to my fabric. So I'm assuming that 
you are talking about um, using a pencil and, and maybe you can clarify, I'm not sure who posted this, but um, maybe you can clarify, but when you draw out on your steam or on your parchment paper and you're using that as the, um, as your guide, yeah, sometimes my pencil will transfer. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you an example. So if I peel this whole thing off, you can see the pencil lines on that, on the reverse side, side of the fabric, but I can't see it through on this side. So while I see it on the back, um, I don't see it on the front. So for me, it hasn't been a problem. It might be a problem if you're using light fabric against a light background, then you, yeah, you might want to be a little bit careful. Um, and just my recommendation would be to just keep that in mind. If you are using light on light, make sure that your pencil markings are a little bit lighter as well so that you don't run into that. The other thing too is, um, parchment paper is semi transparent. So you can most often, if you have the gray tone guide, but beneath your parchment paper, um, particularly if you're doing a light design and intend to put it on a light background, you can probably see through enough that you don't have to trace the design on to your parchment paper. So I hope that is helpful. Um, let's see here. Oh, Robin just said, could I see the sea creatures that you mentioned? Um, the one, the only ones that I have around are, I've got the Krabby Patty right here and let me grab the octopus. So this octopus is almost finished. I showed you this last week. Um, I haven't pressed it down, so I don't want to hold it up too much, but Ooh, looking good, right? I'm excited about this one. And I have a jellyfish that will be in the sea creatures. I have starfish. They're put away. I'll show those again. So there will be starfish in that. And there's a fish that's also in that. So I'm, I'm just about ready to start working on the final touches for the sea creatures. But so it will have the octopus, a fish, starfish, the crab. Um, what else did I have? I think some shells. I think that's the jellyfish. So anyway, that's what's going to be in the, um, in the sea creatures. Um, okay. Let's see if there are some other comments. Sherry just said, will your webinars be offered somewhere other than Facebook? Um, great question. So the webinars, the monthly webinar that I will be doing, it will be uh, not, a, not a free live video. It is something that will be offered on Zoom. You can sign up for it. There are limited spots for each one. And um, you don't have to be on Facebook for that. Um, I do want your feedback. If there are projects that you are working on, um, I'd love to know what you'd like to see me work on. And the reason I'm not doing it in the live video is there's just a little bit too much content to go into and it will take a little bit too much time for a live video. I try to keep my live videos only up to a half hour, which we've hit that mark already. But um, so I'm going to continue to answer these questions real quick and then we'll um, we'll call it a day for until next week. Um, thank you, Karen. Emily, or Amelia is feeling better. Uh, so let's see. Kathy Ballantyne just asked, do you have a recommendation for an iron? Uh, my Rowenta is only a year old and I don't like it. You know what? I had a problem with my Rowenta as well. So um, I figured I was just going to try a cheapo iron from Costco. I think I got it at Costco or Target. It was just, it's just, you know, and it wasn't very expensive. So it was kind of like, if it works, great. If it doesn't, then um, I haven't invested too much money. So that's what I did. And it's like a sunbeam or something and it works great. I've had it for a couple of years now. And it, um, so that's the iron that I use when I'm pressing my fabric just a cheapo iron that gets really hot and has lots of steam. And I don't feel like I've spent a ton of money on it. The other iron that I use a lot that I 
really, really recommend is my little, is a little wand for your, so I love this for, for a little mini iron, but this one is particular for these small things that I'm working on um, with parchment pressing technique. So these are available for sale on my website or elsewhere, but they are available on my website. Let's see here. Um, Kathy has a great way to store her, uh, her fabric as well. Um, she stores her fabric with the sass in resealable, uh, plastic bags. So that's a great idea. Um, so somebody just asked, will you be posting the cutting and piecing instructions for the quilt you made with the Raven? Yes. Thank you for reminding me of that. Um, I made a quilt for my son's girlfriend over right before Christmas with the Raven, and it was just a, a series of simple blocks, and I promised that I would post that, so I'll get that done. Um, uh, let's see. Robin just asked, can I buy the sea creatures as individual patterns, um, as downloads? I do think that I will have each block downloadable um so i i think what we'll do is we'll have the physical pattern available for the entire quilt and then we'll have individual blocks that you can download as well um for that will be for the uh sea creatures the um night noises and i've got another possibly another another quilt that will be made that way. But anyway, so for those, yes, I think so. Okay. So I think that's about it. We are out of time and I want to thank you so much for being here, joining me in my studio. It's always, um, this is something I look forward to every week to, to see you all on Mondays, 11 o'clock in my studio and cross our fingers that I can get done with the night noise quilt and have that to share with you next week. So until then, if you have any questions, you can find me in the Collage Quilter Academy Facebook group, um, if, or you can email me directly, emily at collagequilter.com. Okay, thanks, you guys. Have a wonderful week. Stay warm, and I will talk to you next week.